why diagnosing sacroiliac joint pain is challenging. We all know that low back pain is very common. The sacroiliac joint is a major source of low back pain. It is responsible for approximately 22% of all low back pain and about 40% in patients with lower spine fusion. The problem is pain originating from the sacroiliac joint is usually unappreciated, underdiagnosed, and misunderstood. And this pain is usually attributed to other sources, such as the spine and the hip. Patients experiencing low back pain can spend months or even years in treatment without the correct diagnosis. If you have a patient with chronic low back pain and this patient is not improving with treatment, it is important to look at the sacroiliac joint as the source of the low back pain. So why is the sacroiliac joint unique? And why is there confusion about diagnosing sacroiliac joint pain? Why will the patients go to see multiple healthcare providers and get multiple diagnoses with many images and MRIs? The MRIs alone may not be very helpful. It could give us false positives about the intervertebral disc condition. And why are we missing the real pain generator, which is the sacroiliac joint? The truth is this sacroiliac joint does not have a known cause for the pain. There is no typical clinical history and typical physical exam findings or imaging studies that exist and help the clinician in making a reliable diagnosis. The truth is the sacroiliac joint is an important joint. It transfers the force and the load from the spine to the legs through the hips. The sacroiliac joint is 20 times more vulnerable to axial overloading than the lumbar spine. And for people that want to know where is the sacroiliac joint, this is a simple explanation. This is the spine. The lower part of the spine is called the sacrum. And this is the pelvis. The connection between the sacrum and the pelvis is called the sacroiliac joint. The sacroiliac joint has unique anatomical characteristics. The joint surfaces are irregular. It has strong ligaments surrounded by strong muscles for support and stabilization of the joint. The posterior superior iliac spine is rich with posterior sacral network of nerves. And close to the sacroiliac joint, there is a lot of nerves, including the lumbosacral plexus, the origin of the sciatic nerve. Because the nerves run around the sacroiliac joint, the patient can present with sciatica-like pain, with buttock pain radiating down the thigh and the leg. The lower part of the sacroiliac joint is synovial, which can be inflamed, and the inflamed synovial fluid can leak outside the joint and irritate the surrounding nerves. Because of its anatomy, the sacroiliac joint is subjected to severe mechanical stress. What are the causes or the predisposing factors of sacroiliac joint pain? The cause of the pain is usually idiopathic with multiple risk factors existing, including prior lower lumbar spine fusion, more than three levels. 80% of the patients will give a history of a specific trauma, usually a twisting injury. Repetitive low-impact activities such as jogging, pregnancy, and closing spondylitis 
If you suspect it, get HLA-B27. Scoliosis. Leg length discrepancy. There is really no specific cause for the sacroiliac joint pain. The cause of the sacroiliac joint pain is usually difficult to determine. Some people believe it is a mechanical dysfunction. Usually, the sacroiliac joint allows for minimal movement. Excessive or abnormal movement can cause dysfunction of the sacroiliac joint, instability, and pain. It can be this small movement of the sacroiliac joint, which is less than 1.6 millimeter of translation and less than 4 degrees of angulation, causing that amount of pain. Diagnosing the sacroiliac joint pain is not easy. In fact, it is challenging. There is no radiological study or a clinical exam that can give us a reliable diagnosis. The sacroiliac joint is less recognized as a cause of low back pain because usually it doesn't show any abnormality radiographically. This is not something that the MRI, the X-ray, or the CT scan can show clearly. Up to 25% of asymptomatic patients over the age of 50 years old will show abnormal sacroiliac joints in the X-ray. It is known the articular surface changes with age. The synovial surface begins to degenerate by the age of 50, and closure of the SI joint is common in men after the age of 50. Although the patient may have some MRI findings of disc changes, and this may throw the physician off. When there is a previous lumbar fusion, check the x-rays carefully. Make sure that the hardware is stable with no hardware failure or loosening and no non-union or adjacent segment instability. There is a wide variability in the clinical presentation from localized pain to tenderness around the sacroiliac joint to radiating pain that looks like sciatica. The sacroiliac joint pain overlaps with spine pain and hip pain. The fact that the patient may have more than one pain generator and there should be a differential diagnosis with spine conditions and with hip conditions. This SI joint pain can be similar to facet joint pain, sciatica, disc herniation, or discogenic pain. Sacroiliac joint pain can cause sciatica, mimicking disc herniation. The sacroiliac joint must be part of low back pain evaluation. When the pain of the sacroiliac joint affects the groin, it overlaps the hip joint pain. You must identify the primary source of the pain in order to achieve a successful clinical outcome. In reality, in addition to doing spine and the hip examinations, you will check the patient for gait disturbance, such as Trindenburg gait, and you're going to check the patient for leg length discrepancy and for scoliosis. You will do straight leg raise and a neurological exam. The straight leg raise is usually negative. The relationship between the sacroiliac joint and sciatica is present, but not stressed enough during the examination. So what are the symptoms of sacroiliac joint pain? It is non-specific. So the patient will complain of lower back, buttock, back of the thigh, and occasional groin pain. You find that the patient had difficulty and discomfort while sitting. Pain during sitting with the weight on the affected side. Pain with loading the affected side. Pain occurring from sitting to standing. Pain with stepping up or going upstairs. Patient feels leg instability and giving away. 
Patient will have trouble with sleeping and pain when rolling over in bed. The patient will need careful physical examination. There are steps that we have to take to find the sacroiliac joint is the cause of the patient's pain. Make sure you have a high index of suspicion for every patient with low back pain. Make sure that the patient description and location of the symptoms is clear to you. Ask the patient where is the maximum area of pain. And the 14 finger test is confirmed when the patient points to the area of the pain by the finger just medial and inferior to the posterior superior iliac spine. Where does it hurt? If the patient points with the finger below L5 level, then this is the 14 finger test, and it is suggestive of sacroiliac joint pain. Versus if the patient places a hand above the L5 level, then it's probably low back pain due to spine causes, especially if the patient pain is in the midline. With placement of a finger, the patient describes the pain over the painful area, which is to the side, and it is at or below the posterior superior iliac spine. The pain is usually below the L5 level in the majority of cases. If you get an x-ray of this area, you'll find that this points directly over the sacroiliac joint. And there might be a confusion when the pain is not exclusively over the 14th point. How do you find the L5 level? Palpation of the iliac crest posteriorly will correspond to the level of L4 vertebra. Palpation of the posterior superior iliac spine will correspond to the S2 level. For the pain to be coming from the sacroiliac joint, the pain must be at the level of the posterior superior iliac spine or below it. The physician may also get thrown off by the fact that the patient may not have pain over the posterior superior iliac spine. Patients with other causes of low back pain may also have tenderness over this area. If you put pressure on the joint, it will be painful. But if you take the pressure of the joint, then the patient will feel better. This pressure can be from the weight bearing or from the examiner's hand. After we find the location of the pain by the Fortin test, we are going to tell the patient that we're going to do examinations and we are going to provoke the symptoms because we are going to try to find the cause of the pain. Ask the patient to tell you if it is the same pain or a different pain. These provocative tests are painful and you need to warn the patient about the pain that they may experience. The whole idea is that shear of the sacroiliac joint reproduces the pain. With three or more positive provocative tests, we will need further investigation to confirm the diagnosis. The compression test and the thigh thrust test are considered the most valuable tests. If the provocative tests are suggestive of sacroiliac joint problems, then we will confirm the diagnosis with injection. You usually recommend the injection when the patient has a positive history, positive 14 finger test, positive provocative tests, negative lumbar and the hip examination, and negative x-rays. Use the injection to confirm the history and the physical examination. Use ultrasound or fluoroscopy for the injection. Injection can help temporarily. There are some problems with the injection. For example, do we need to do intraarticular injection? How much should we inject? Do we inject steroids the first time? 
you will get different answers for these questions. It is decisions, preference, and experience, which is better than an academic recommendation. Two-thirds of the patient have more than 50% pain reduction for about six weeks. The value of injection is lower in patients with spine fusion. Don't inject more than three times within six months or four times within one year. If you have 75% pain improvement, then this is a positive test, which means the SI joint is the pain generator. If you have 50 to 75% improvement, this is equivocal test. Then you repeat the injection because the patient may have multiple pain generators. If you have minimal or no response, then this is a negative test, and the sacroiliac joint is probably not the source of the pain. Treatment of sacroiliac joint dysfunction is usually conservative without surgery. Surgery is the last resort. Surgery is done by SI joint fusion, which will lead to symptomatic improvement when the sacroiliac joint is the primary pain generator. The fusion will give the patient significant improvement in pain and disability and improving the quality of life at two years. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.